We're here with a good friend from HBO, Kieran Mulvaney. Kieran, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How's it going, Jason? Uh, it's going great. Can't complain. We're doing for a living. Uh, main event. Compelling fight. Is it any more competitive than we think it might be between Kovalev and McCulkin? I think... The fight that I th that this makes me think of a little bit potentially is the Isaac Chalamba fight for Sergei Kovalev in that I don't know that Mikalkin's going to beat him, but he could make life awkward for him. He's one of those fighters. I mean, he himself says he's not a hard hitter. Um, he admits that. Um, Kovalev respects him. You know, he thinks he's going to bring a real fight. He says he's a real man. He's going to, you know, but I think it's more a case of awkwardness and Sergei's going to have to kind of trap him and, and wear him down. The one thing that Mikalkin does, though, he jabs a lot to the body, but when he does that, he leaves his head down and in range, and I don't think he can afford to do that. Um, and I suspect that might end up being a bit of a problem. I think Sergey's going to wear him down. You think, bet the over though, right? Not that we're doing any gambling tips, but you think it could go longer than shorter? I think about halfway, I think, would be my guess, about six. I think it might take Sergey a little bit of time to, to sort of track him down, but I could see Sergey stopping him. What's your take on the post-ward Sergey Kovalev from what you've seen? He seems like a guy who, <clears throat> Going into that first fight and then even more with the second fight, everybody knows about all the issues that he was having, both with himself, with John David. He feels, it seems to me, a guy who's finally getting his act together. Who, This is the Sergei, I think, that we had up to and through the Bernard Hopkins fight. Completely dedicated, determined to be as big of a success as he could be. He let that go, I think, after the Bernard Hopkins fight, and I think he'd admit that. Um, he's much happy, happier with uh, Opera Torsen Pulatov. He can talk Russian with him. Well done with the name, by the way. Thank you very much. I've been rehearsing. Um, the fact that he's able to talk Russian in the corner with this guy and during training makes a huge difference. Sergei's English is excellent, but he thinks in Russian. He wants fast thoughts in Russian, and that makes a big difference. He knows our broader a little bit. Um, and I think there was some cynicism that maybe he was picking a guy who he'd be able to dominate a little bit and who would, who would let Sergei run the camp, but it seems like the opposite has happened. It seems like he's surrendered himself completely to Arbroar. Um, he's in shape. He sort of generally got his act together, I think. He seems like he's more focused and more dedicated again now. While the big star is in the main event, perhaps the more compelling, maybe even more important fight at late heavyweight, as far as figuring out yeah. the pecking order, is the co-feature between Dimitri Bivol and Sullivan Barrera. It seems like a 50-50 fight, just given with Barrera's pedigree, his all-around skill game versus Bivol and his raw, pure ability. Yeah. How do you see this breaking down? Uh, I think it is a really interesting fight because there comes a point with every guy who you think is really good where you have to find out if he's really good. And Sullivan Barrera is the first real test for Dimitri Bivol. How good is he? Has he just been bowling guys over? Uh, or presented with the opportunity to fight a really good fighter, is he actually going to prove that he's that, he's that good? I kind of think Bivol is that good. Uh, I think he's got skills as well as power, um, you know, and I think he'll demonstrate that. Uh, you know, you look at, like, their uh, um, one common opponent, Felix Valera. Um, very, very awkward guy. Um, Bivol outpointed him. I pointed him perhaps even more emphatically than Sullivan Barrera did, um, which shows that he's got the boxing skills, the chops, I think, to go with his power. Um, Barrera is going to present a very, very difficult challenge for him, but he can get tagged. He's been dropped in his last two fights, three of his last five, I think. Um, he can't afford to do that against Bivol. Uh, he can do that against Felix Valera. He can do that against Joe Smith Jr. I don't think he can do that against Dimitri Bivol. I think he's going to make Bivol work very, very hard. I think it's going to be a terrific fight. Um, really, really close. Maybe Bivol isn't what I think he is. And if he isn't, Barrera will show us. I think Bivol is that good. I fancy Bivol to win on points. Yeah. Good call. Uh, now, as far as the big picture at 175, it's a stacked yeah. division. You've got quality champions everywhere. and You've got contenders who are just waiting for their shot. Where does this card go to kind of settle in the order of things? Oh, I think it's really important. I think it's almost like a semi-final. Um, we have to see the two winners meet in the fall, I think, probably. Um, whoever that is, um, probably Sergei against one of the other guys. Um, and that will go a long way, I think, to determining like one side of the bracket. And then we've got guys like Better Beer. We've got guys like Vojdik, um, all these guys that are out there as well, wanting to, to, to play a role. So I think this is really important. Yeah, I think this is like the semi-final. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great time at the fights, Kieran. Thanks a lot, brother. Always good to see you. Thanks a lot.